Hello everyone, bringing you a video today looking at the recreation of the kit of a British soldier, British infantryman specifically, serving in Malaya in the early to mid 1950s. This kit is very stripped down because this is representing a soldier on a very short range patrol, basically a day's patrol, and is referenced off footage available through Pathé News on YouTube, and I'll put a link to that in the pinned comment down below the video. Without further ado, we'll get into the main part of the video now and have a look at this recreation in some detail. Looking at an overview of the recreation here, you can probably see already that the kit worn is very stripped down. It's not a huge amount of kit here and what there is is carried basically around the waist on the belt and with a bandolier tied around the waist as well, which we'll see more detail of in just a minute. The reason for this is the kit shown here is a recreation of the kind of thing carried by troops engaged in short range patrols, day patrols. To conduct these patrols, troops would be taken to a particular area by motor transport, conduct a patrol during the course of the day and then will be returned to their camp by nightfall. Looking at the kit in more detail, we'll start off with the weapon carried, and in this instance we have the rifle number five. This of course was a late development during the course of the Second World War, intended initially for issue to all troops as a shortened and lightened version of the number four. The weapon did see extensive use in the jungle post Second World War and became quite synonymous with this theatre of operations, hence the moniker jungle carbine even though the number five was considered a rifle in British terminology and was at least initially intended for more general issue. The action of the number five is very similar to that of the number four and of course it can be loaded with 10 rounds of 303 ammunition in the box magazine loaded from five round charges. You'll notice the conspicuous flash hider at the muzzle. This was necessary due to firing full power 303 ammunition from such a short barrel. Moving on to talk about the rest of the uniform and equipment we will start at the top and we have here the British jungle hat. This particular example has been set up in typical fashion of the time with the sides of the brim turned up, with the crown stoved in and stitched down. You can see on this side the two ventilation eyelets on the side have worked loose and have just left two open holes having fallen out due to wear and tear. The basic uniform consists of what is sometimes referred to as the 1948 pattern jungle uniform by collectors. It's actually the Jackets, Bush and Trousers SCC-19, which is the colour code for this particular shade of green in British Army use. The uniform consists of a cellular bush jacket, which is worn here tucked in as a shirt, which was very common amongst British troops at the time to tuck the bush jacket in and basically wear it as a shirt. The trousers, by contrast, are made of cotton drill. And you can see here they are quite similar to the pattern produced in India during the course of the Second World War. They have a map pocket on the front of the left leg and then a dressing pocket on the upper right leg and you can see the details of that. You can just see the edge of the dressing pocket and the pleats here. Much as the more familiar 1950 pattern bush jacket and trousers were in production by this point, it's still very common to see troops wearing the SEC 19 bush jacket and trousers right the way through the middle 1950s in Malaya. The equipment carried is formed primarily from a stripped down set of 1944 pattern web equipment. You can see the belt for that here. And ammunition is actually carried in this instance in a cotton bandolier which has been tied around the waist. Round on the front right hip you can see a basic pouch from the 1944 pattern equipment is carried. And this has been modified with slits in the back to allow it to be carried low on the belt with no other means of support. This is not actually carrying ammunition in this instance. This is something referenced from the footage mentioned previously, the Pathé newsreel footage. The basic pouch is actually being used to carry brew making facilities. So a tin of tea, a tommy cooker, an alcohol stove essentially, and the requisite spoon in order to dole out and stir the tea. And that's what the ammunition pouch was being used to carry in the footage used to reference this particular recreation. Moving on to look at the back of the belt, we can see that the aluminium 1944 pattern water bottle and its associated cup are carried in the 1944 pattern carrier, slung from the back of the belt using the M1910 type hanger hooks through the eyelets at the bottom of the belt, as you can see here. You can also see the three part construction of the belt here with the side sections of the belt clipping onto the rear section to form one continuous belt and allow for adjustment in size. Finally, round on the left hip, the bayonet for the number five is carried. You can see this is carried in the 1944 pattern bayonet frog. The equipment was really designed for the bayonet to be carried on the side of the pouch. The left hand ammunition pouch having loops for this, but as that pouch is not part of the equipment, the bayonet has been carried in a separate frog, which also formed part of the equipment for use as required. You'll note that the bayonet has a very large muzzle ring to fit over the flash hider at the muzzle of the number five. Final thing to talk about here is footwear. 
and what you can see here are something which have been talked about on the channel previously, the much maligned British jungle boots, which are canvas and rubber construction. A very lightweight boot, comfortable to wear in the dry, but the jungle is rarely dry. And the problem with these boots is that the canvas allows water to get into the boot, and then the rubber around the lower part of the uppers of the boot means that the water is then trapped and will not drain. There are no drainage eyelets. So you're walking in a puddle of water the entire time you're wearing these, basically. Not a good design. Nevertheless, they would see service right the way through into the 1970s in some instances. Returning to look at the overview of the recreation here, it's important to note that the equipment carried is to some degree dependent on the weapon carried. Obviously, in this instance, we have 303 ammunition carried in a bandolier tied around the waist. If an Owen machine carbine or an M1 carbine was carried, the ammunition carriage would vary accordingly, often with locally made pouches being used to carry the magazines for these weapons. Bearing that in mind, this nevertheless is quite a good illustration of the kind of kit that was in use with British forces in Malaya at the time. So I do hope you found it interesting looking at this. The Malayan emergency is a particular area of interest for me, so it's been very nice putting this kit together and talking about it. If you have found this interesting and you'd like to see more of this sort of thing, please do consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And whether you're newly subscribing or you've previously subscribed, please do make sure you hit the little bell the notification button down below. That will, of course, alert you when I upload future videos. If you really like my uploads and you would like to support the channel, you can. Both Patreon and PayPal are linked down below. And a massive thank you, as ever, to everybody who supports the channel using those two methods. It really is greatly appreciated. Thank you all very much indeed. If you'd like to follow the channel on social media, you can. Facebook, Instagram and Twitter are all linked down below. And if you'd like to get in touch but you don't really use social media, there is, of course, an email address down there as well. That's everything for this video. So, until next time, bye for now.